Hey, so in this video, we are going to be talking about the Volvo V8. Um, this is in the XC90. This is my daily driver. And I'm going to be replacing the oil cooler on this engine uh, because I believe that's what's causing oil to get into my coolant. So if your coolant tank or overflow tanker looks like this, all brown and sludgy um, and is overflowing even uh, then you may have the same issue um, I, I started noticing uh, I'll just give you a rundown on what kind of what happened uh, driving it and my low oil light came on and this was shortly after I had uh, just changed the oil so I was, uh, and I know it was at the correct level, so I thought it was kind of weird. So I checked the uh, oil level, and sure enough, it was a little bit low. And at the same time, I noticed uh, this was leaking coolant out, and it looked brown like this. Um, so you can you can tell clearly that oil is getting mixed into the coolant. So my first thought was, you know. Uh, is it a head gasket? Uh, is it something in the radiator? And after doing some research, I found out on these that it's very unlikely to get uh, engine oil in the coolant and not get coolant in the oil. So the oil looked really clean. So uh, I, I, after doing some more research, I found out that it's pretty common actually on these V8s uh, for the oil cooler to develop hairline cracks and uh, start and, and since the pressure is higher in the engine oil than it is in the coolant um, then it will go into the coolant but not into the oil so pretty sure that's what's going on I went ahead and ordered a new oil cooler um, this is the new one and it actually comes with a new seal as well and you can see inside there's two passages for the coolant to come in and out and the oil to go in there as well um, yeah these are the two hoses for the coolant this goes on the engine pan the oil pan side which I'll show you in a second here um, and that's the seal see I, I had I ordered a seal separately because I didn't know if it came with one but it did come with one and this is the Denso part number made in Japan because this is a Yamaha 4.4 liter V8 and this matches the exact same one on the engine and I'll show you that in a second here all right this is underneath and you can see the V8 so this is the oil pan and then you have your oil filter oil level sensor and then boom, you have your oil cooler. And this is the one that I need to take out. And if you look, it's actually the same exact part number and everything, Denso, Japan, everything matches up. I'm going to first drain the uh, coolant. And obviously, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to drain the engine oil, even though I just did an oil change on this. All right, I have the oil drain now. Uh, the cover here, or the oil filter housing, goes right there. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that out because it gives you a little bit more room to get in there. Uh, there's obviously four bolts holding this uh, oil cooler in. There's the coolant lines going in, so you got an in and an out. Um, so next I'm going to, now that the oil's drained, I'm going to disconnect that hose right there and drain the coolant out. Um, and then, uh, there's the, there's the drain plug. It's a 17 millimeter in case you, uh, have never drained the oil in your car. And, uh, and then this is the housing and filter, um helps to have the housing tool that fits all those. Uh, uh, also, I 
this wire here, the sensor wire uh, routes along these clips here and then uh, is attached to this right here. You can just slide that out and un un these just come out of these little clips. So I'm just going to move this out of the way over there and the other end of it I got laying right here. This is the other end of it that goes up to the computer. If you want to remove this front cover here. There's a there's a bar right here that comes all the way across. This is your guard. It goes all the way to the other side. And these two bolts I just took out. And there's another third bolt that goes up in there. And this kind of goes up and holds up on the lip. So once you get all those out, this whole uh, guard can come out and then it'll expose the underside of the radiator. All right, I got it draining. Um, got that hose clamp loose. And as you can see, and I, I just kind of stuck a screwdriver in there for now. I don't want to pull the hose off altogether, make a huge mess with coolant. So I just kind of stuck a screwdriver in there enough to get it to start leaking out. So just letting it drain right now. I'm probably gonna take a little bit, but the coolant is now finished draining and uh, I got this hose out the rest of the way. So still kind of dripping, but uh, I started breaking these uh, eight millimeter nuts loose here, these bolts. Um, these two are real easy to get to. Uh, those broke free. They're a little, they're a little hard to break free, but I got them. All right, I'm on this last bolt here, the hardest one to get, and you guys are gonna love this. Um, I ended up getting it, but it was pretty tricky. Um, this is what I did. So this cross member right here is you could actually get through it through the top. So what I did was use it long extension on this ratchet the extension goes all the way over right to that top bolt and I was able to get that by getting extension way over here and breaking it free that way because I just couldn't get anything else in there in front of uh, on this side of the cross member it was just too tight but this ended up working I had to fish it through though Took a little bit to fish it through. I'll I'll pull this out here in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what I ended up using. So I got them all broken free now. Um, I'm gonna take all the bolts out. And, uh, then I'll be able to get to the top hose clamp and I'll probably take that out after I get this uh, get these bolts out. All right, I got all the bolts out and. Uh, Popped it free here, and it's just being held up by this top hose clamp up there. So I'm gonna work on getting that hose clamp out. Well, I got it out. Uh, this hose up there was uh, giving me a little trouble. Um, that goes right here on this one here. Uh, but I finally worked it free, and then this came right off. And that's what it looks like on the oil pan side. And then here's the old one. I'm hoping that was the issue. Uh, internal crack in there somewhere. Uh, I hear you can you can pressure test these somehow, but I'm not gonna bother because I already got a new one. And uh, so from this point on, I'm just gonna clean this up. I'll clean the surface really good. Um, I'm going to reuse these hoses and uh, just reinstall it the, in the same steps that I did to take it out. Alright, I got the new uh, oil cooler in everyone. Um, as you can see here, I got the new hoses back on. Or not the new ones, I should say. The old ones back on. Threw a new clamp on this upper one here. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too bad getting it back in. Just had to take your time. 
the uh, the top top bolts are a little tough to get to, but also uh, another note: um, this piece here that I was talking about removing, um, it's all one piece, um, and you can see. It, uh, it's actually attached. There's a upper part that you have to lift it up and over right there. Um, but it's six bolts, three on each side, and then that gives you room to uh, get to the other side of the radiator, which uh, you get a coolant line, coolant hose right there, and then there's a, you can't really see it very good, but there's a petcock drain right down in there too but I just uh, undid that hose clamp so I can clean it out a little better and um, I got more coolant to come out but I didn't take it completely out here so I'm just gonna slide that back in it actually opened this gap up a little bit so you can get your hand in over and reach over to get, get access to these hoses a little better uh, and now all that's left is to Put the oil filter back on, fill it up with oil, and fill it up with coolant. Um, and the first time through, I actually bought this Blue Devil radiator flush and oil degreaser. So I'm going to run this on the first one with the coolant, or actually with water, I should say. Um, so you run this with water, drive it around, or, or run it for... 20 minutes or you could drive it around for an hour um, and then that's supposed to get rid of some of the oil in the coolant system and then you can drain that back out flush it out till it comes clear and then uh, then you can fill it back up with regular uh, radiator fluid and uh, for that I tried to get the uh, OEM Volvo blue coolant but uh, they were like on back order and I didn't feel like waiting so actually went to AutoZone and they had uh, this formula which is the blue European vehicles and it says right there Volvo pre-2015 it is a HOTE so it's silicate enhanced hybrid organic acid technology coolant so it says it's good should be safe for this uh, that's what I'm gonna use up here I cleaned the radiator uh, overflow tank here <clears throat> had a, I put some of that radiator flush cleaner in there and shook it around in there rinsed it out really good uh, it's a lot cleaner than it was um, just in case anyone was wondering how this is set up um, you got your clips in the back attached to that and underneath you have the main uh, return line or drain this in this this line here goes right down to the water pump down by the, on the engine <clears throat> and then you have your coolant sensor level sensor right there plugs into that up on this side this line goes in here and this runs to the top of your radiator and then on this side uh, is yet another line plugged in right there and that actually goes down to the oil cooler one of the oil cooler lines I believe because when I poured water in there it was coming out one of those lines so that's how that's set up and then the power steering fluid obviously attaches to that which can be a pain in the butt to get that clip on there um, but yeah this thing was filthy as you saw before it's uh, a little cleaner now, but I'll, I got to run that radiator flush stuff through the whole system. So I'm going to start filling it up now that I got all the hoses connected and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I filled up the coolant. It's pretty straightforward. You just fill it up through here. Um, as you're filling it, the level will keep draining down in, into the uh, radiator and the engine. You just keep filling it up until... Uh, it no longer drains down in there. Back up to the max line, close the lid again, and uh, and then I ran it for about 20 minutes with the flush and water. 
um, that way that's what it says on the flush bottles to run it at least 10, 20 minutes get it it got up to full temp uh, and then I shut it off let it cool down and this is where it's at right now uh, it only dropped down to about the min mark on this side there's the min mark and this is what it looks like after running 20 minutes with that coolant flush in it as you can see uh, there was still quite a bit of coolant left in the system um, as you would expect because uh, just you know unfortunately just opening those two hoses to drain the coolant doesn't get it all out um, so what I'm going to do now is drain whatever I can from the radiator hose uh, run more water through it all right, I got it draining here. This is the front of the radiator. This is the front of the car right here. Uh, and I got this this bracket here dropped down so I can get to this. And that's the Petcot drain. You just kind of turn it counterclockwise until it starts coming out. It's pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna start draining this here and keep filling it until this thing comes out clear. All right, I drained most of it out and then uh, refilled it back up with water, with distilled water. Um, and then I ran it until it got up to temp. Uh, it started circulating. You could see it start to circulate in through here when once the thermostat opens. And then uh, I am again draining it right now. That's almost done. And then I think I'm going to fill it up with uh, distilled water again, and I might even put a little coolant in this time around. And I think I'm going to call it good for now and drive it around for a little while. And then uh, maybe like in a week or so, I'll drain it and fill it again. But uh, it's getting clearer every time. It's It's almost there. So that's where I'm at right now. All right, so it's been a few days of driving this car around and I believe everything's fixed. Uh, the oil level is, made, is consistent now, it's not dropping. Uh, the coolant is not raising either like it was before. So I believe it's fixed. Um, <clears throat> I did drain and fill it a few times, but this is after sitting overnight. So after I drive it around, it, it kind of mixes. This is the remaining oil that was kind of left in the system. Um, and as you can see, like <clears throat> after it sits overnight, it kind of goes down. So there's still a little layer of like oil in it that kind of separates uh, after it sits. And um, I'm just gonna take this thing out. I'm gonna open this cap and I'm gonna try to tilt this thing and, and drain it all that way at least get some of the rest of that oil out and then top it off with more coolant but uh it definitely fixed the issue and uh hopefully it helps all you guys out there with the Volvo V8s thanks